This video is one in a series of technical tutorials produced by Plextech RF Integration. Hello. Today we're going to be simulating the distortion caused to complex digital modulation by nonlinearities in the RF power amplifier. This distortion degrades adjacent channel power ratio, or ACPR, causes blurring of the constellation points and closure of the eye diagram. We'll be simulating all of these and also determining EVM, the error vector magnitude. Gallium nitride power amplifiers are commonly used in applications such as ECM, electronic countermeasures, and radar, which, needs high, which need high levels of saturated power. However, they are increasingly being considered for applications needing high linearity to preserve modulation fidelity, applications such as point-to-point -point microwave links. In a previous video, Stuart presented the design of a 15 GHz GAN PA Mimic designed on Cree's 0.25 micron process, which is for use in a microwave radio link. Such point-to-point -point links are used in applications where very large amounts of data have to be conveyed, typically data rates of the order of hundreds of megabits, even gigabits per second. The modulation scheme used in these radio links is chosen to be spectrally efficient, in other words, chosen such that the data is carried whilst occupying the least amount necessary of the radio frequency spectrum. Here is an example of a typical modulation scheme, QAM64, where each transmitted symbol represents six data bits. The constellation diagram on the left shows all possible symbols, 64 in this case whilst the eye diagram on the right shows the point in the received transmission where you have to sample the signal to correctly determine its value, which is here. Notice how there's little margin for error. The receiver simple timing recovery loop must be spot on to decode the transmission. Now, I said this type of modulation is spectrally efficient, and here is a spectral plot of QAM64. Notice how rectangular-like the modulation is. The transmission is confined extremely well to the allocated channel. The green trace here is the spectral mask from the regulatory authorities and the modulation must stay within it. One technique to increase capacity in the link is to increase the number of symbols and here there are three more examples. This is QAM128 with 7 bits per symbol. This is QAM256 with 8 bits per symbol and we'll look at this in a little more detail shortly. And finally here's QAM512 with 9 bits per symbol. Notice again here how tight you have to be on getting your symbol timing right to be able to hit, hit that, the centre of that eye diagram. A drawback to these spectrally efficient modulation schemes is that they are corrupted by nonlinearities in the transmission system and one of the largest contributors is non-linearity due to the PA when it is driven towards its maximum output. In other words, you have to be careful not to overdrive the PA in these systems in an attempt to get more power from it because it will corrupt the modulation. The corruption can be observed in two ways, both of which we'll see in our simulations. The first way is as a distortion of the modulation constellation leading to eye closure which in the worst case could mean one transmitted data symbol being read as a different symbol at the receiver, resulting in very large transmission errors. EVM, or error vector magnitude, is one measure of characterising this effect, and specifications for radio links will have an EVM figure that the system must meet. The second way in which PA distortion manifests itself is in the generation of intermodulation products in nearby channels. This is sometimes known as spectral regrowth, and is a spilling of the modulated spectrum into channels occupied by other users. This has to be avoided, and radio link specifications will have an adjacent channel power specification mask that the transmitter must meet to ensure spectral regrowth doesn't corrupt someone else's channel. The impact of PA distortion on the link modulation can be predicted by using a radio system simulator, and this is what we'll be doing now. 
Our system simulator is MATLAB and we will model the PA non-linearity using the level dependent magnitude and phase of the voltage transfer function for the amplifier which Stuart previously generated using Agilent's ADS RF circuit simulator. We'll first perform a sanity check to make sure that the distortion, in this case the PA's third order intercept or IP3, predicted by MATLAB matches that predicted by ADS using a two-tone simulation. Here's the test bench. So here's our input. There's, these are two signal generators producing a sine wave source each, uh, separated by um, a short, uh, a small frequency separation. And this represents the two tones that uh, you'd normally do at RF for measuring intermod. These two signals are added and then passed through this, which is a gain block. And so here I can increase or decrease the drive level into the following block, which is the nonlinear PA. At this point I can actually monitor the spectrum of the signal, which I do here, and I can even monitor the power. And then on the output of the, uh, after, after the nonlinear PA, again I can look at what has happened to the spe frequency spectrum, and I can also look at the power. Okay, so let's run this simulation. Okay, so the simulation has run, and what I was doing was sweeping the drive level into the PA uh, from a low power level up to a high power level. Here's a snapshot of the input signal, and if I zoom in, you can see there are the two frequency tones that I'm putting into the simulator. And then on the output, after the PA, I've got this uh, spectrum. So the two, two input tones have come out here and here, but also the distortion in the PA has produced third order products here and here, and here's some fifth order products and so on like that. This graph shows the input signal level against the output signal level, and you can see on this scale the wanted uh, signals are coming out here, and the third order tones, that's these levels here which we're measuring, uh, is coming, coming out here. So as you increase, for every 1 dB you increase in signal level of the, of the wanted signals, you'll see the intermod products here and here go up by 3 dBs, and that's what this curve is showing here. And as the amplifier goes towards, o um, towards compression, then the power out starts to compress and fold over, and also the products, the third order products, start to change as well. And the, th the final graph here is one way of capturing that. What, we've show what we have here is a graph of the output power against the output IP3. And you can see that the, at lower levels the output IP3 of the amplifier is around about my, uh, 46 dBm in this case. Um, but as it goes towards uh, compression and, and higher, then you do get some variation in that. So what we're going to do now is check that this graph here ties in with the one that Stuart did in ADS. And if, if those two are in agreement, then we've got a good uh, foundation for carrying on using uh, MATLAB to simulate the uh, distortion effects of the amplifier. This is the comparison graph between the simulation at RF that uh, Stuart did using ADS and the simulation that I've just done with MATLAB. And you can see that the two lines, the two characteristics, are, are very, tie in very well indeed. Uh, there's, so there's less than a quarter of a dB difference in output IP3 over this 35 dB range in output power. So we've got a very good comparison and that gives us confidence in terms of carrying on with the MATLAB simulations. As I've already mentioned, the PA we're looking at is designed for a 15 GHz point-to-point -point application. So we start by generating a representative input signal. We're going to look at QAM256 modulation at a data rate of 368 megabits per second and a channel spacing of 56 megahertz. Here's the input circuit for the uh, simulator. We've got a, a random integer generator here going in to produce a rectangular QAM uh, modulation and then it's followed by a root raise cosine filter just to cons contain the, um, the spectrum. And then at this point I can look at the output uh, of, of, um, of a perfect receiver um, and obtain an eye diagram and a scatter diagram just to show what the ideal case would give me. And I can also look at the spectrum. So then we're going to add to that 
a non-linear PA, which is here, and will be a, and and here I can control the drive level into that by a, by a parameter here. And then finally, we'll add in. We'll look at the output. We'll look at the output in terms of the spectrum here, uh, in terms of the eye diagram of the uh, distorted waveform and the spe and the output scatter diagram. And we can also determine the error vector magnitude here on these on these um, windows here. Okay, so let's then run the simulation. Now this simulation is where I'm driving the PA about 4 dBs backed off from its P1dB uh, input corner. This eye diagram here is the input and you can see it's, it's open at this point here. And then and this is the constellation diagram of the input, so it's a nice um, rectangular constellation. So let's now look at the output and, and we'll see what uh, the output looks like. Well let's first look at the constellation and you can see that that has really had some distortion. The, the, the overload in the amplifier has put some curvature, particularly at the extremes. And the points, the symbol points, have now got a blurring as well. And if we look at the eye diagram, you can see that that's now pretty closed uh, quite, a, quite a good way along, along, the, along, its, uh, along the, this dimension. So this is not a very good uh, result and, and you'd certainly have problems with, with this modulation, with this degree of compression. Looking at the spectrum again, you can see that the, uh, the nice rectangular spectrum which we would expect to see here has now got this regrowth on the sides here and here and that's, that's due to the intermodulation that's occurring because of the non-linearity. So what we'll do now is we'll drive, we'll back off the drive, we'll back it off 3 dBs so that we are now uh, 7 dB backed off from the P1 dB point and we'll see what that does to the simulation. Okay, so with um, a further 3 dB backed off to 7 dB back off from 1 dBc, we can now th see that the eye has started to open up. Uh, so we, that's, that's made things better. And you can see that the degree of compression that we've got here is not as severe as it was a few moments ago. And what's happened to the spectral uh, leakage? Well, that is now within, within the mask. If we actually go to the simulation file and look at uh, what the EVM is, we see that we're hit, hitting minus 35 dBs. Now we're going to change that again. Now backing off to 9 dBs below com the 1 dB compression point, the eye is nice and open here and the constellation diagram here is much much better and we can see we're getting around 42 dBs on the EVM and again the spectral regrowth is now about uh, 8 or 9 dBs below the spectral mask at this point here. The linearity of the amplifier is also affected by the quiescent bias current. Results presented thus far have been at a quiescent bias of 130 milliamps per millimetre. If we increase the quiescent bias to 160 milliamps per millimetre, this increases the IP3 and the P1dB point, although it has little effect on PSAT. If we now rerun the system simulation with the amplifier at this bias level and keep the input level at the point where it was operating 4 dBs backed off from P1dB at the 130 milliamps per millimetre case, we'll see a reduction in distortion. So here's the result at um, a bias of 160 milliamps but only 4 dBs backed off from the 1 dB point. You can see now that the eye has started to open. It's still not perfect, it's, there's still some closure at these ex extremes here, but it is certainly better than the very first graph that we showed. And this is the output scatter plot. Again, uh, there is curvature there, you can see, but it is not as bad as the earlier one. And the spectral regrowth is just touching the um, regulation masks. 
So what we'll do now is we'll increase the bias a little bit more. We'll go up to 200 milliamps per millimeter and we'll see what that does. Again, this is driving the PA 4 dBs backed off from the 1 dB compression point. And here's the result. So the eye diagram of the output is now certainly open here and the constellation plot, although there is a bit of blurring on these edges, is still a lot, lot clearer. And finally we'll look at the uh, output spectrum and again you can see we've now got some uh, a good degree of margin against the, re against the regulatory spec here. This concludes this tutorial. We have seen that if we have an accurate simulation of the complex voltage transfer characteristics of the PA, we can use MATLAB to investigate the effects of non-linearities on the modulated spectrum. If you'd like more information on the design of MIMIX, please visit our website www.plextecrfi.com. Thank you.